Hey, welcome back to the channel. Uh, we're gonna just go over what it's been taking me to rivet the uh, cabin on and married that to the uh, the epinage here and uh, got into the gear bracket, very time consuming project, but we got one completely done. So we'll be talking about that. So stick around if you're interested in that. Well, I finally marked the lines on the sides of these little flaps and uh, got them all drilled out and matched up. Fits good. Uh, the sides have to be now just taken out. I think I'm going to trim that so it doesn't rub on the roof because it does rub. Get those, all the silver you see into white primer and then move on to the next step. And very soon we'll be putting the cab on the front. Well, I'm finally to the point where I've cleaned this all up. It's ready to receive paint. Um, but what I'm going to do is bring up all the front pieces of the cabin and start clicking them in. And I'm not going to film any of that really, uh, unless I run into a snag. Like, but I get to start the I get to start the fun part. Um, I'm going to move this thing back and try to figure out how I'm going to be able to get underneath it later. Um, it's going to start getting heavier now that I'm putting the front on because we can move it just the way it is. But all these thoughts going through my head and well, I'm going to go get the sides and start clicking up and see if I can install that panel with the floor here and everything in the way. Okay, the first thing is uh, while I'm clicking it all up, I want to put in the uh, super brackets. I'm trying to get it lined up so I can put these nuts and bolts, but right now it's just laying here because these one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's 12 A6s that have to go in and I'm just mocking it up like it's been put together and seeing if I can slide it in there. And you can, I can wiggle it around and get it in there. So um, to give myself a break, before I connect this to the cabin, I'm going to put the super bracket on this cross member by just these 12 A's first, then I, I can easily pull them out and that'll help. Here's line. a quick hack for you. If you're having a hard time getting these holes to line up or any like it, and a Clico doesn't quite pull it up, um, this has to go in just a little bit. If you go to stick this bolt in from the back side, you don't want to mess it up and you don't want to mess up your aluminum um, trying to tension push the threads through so what I did is it took a number four and drilled out the center so that I could insert a three in it and that gives me much smaller threads so that I can put that through from the inside now if you went the other way you got to have a long enough number three to put a washer on it because um, you know, you'll tear your aluminum up trying to tighten that through. But in this case, I can go this way and it, it, I've already done it once so that it kind of pulled it over. But now I can put a nut on the back side and tighten that into the hole. And once that's all the way snug, then this one's lined up and I can put the factory one in and then, um, grab a hold of that with a pair of pliers and slowly wiggle it out and, and do the same here. Well, here's the update so far. I put the little brackets together. I figured I could get away with that, snapping those together and put those in the sides. I test fit whether or not I could take this on and off while they're all riveted up except the end one and you can. So I can take that off to do the uh, rudder pedals and stuff. I did an X measurement from from the edge of that hole to the very top over there and it's perfect square. Uh, I'm telling you guys, they're unbelievable. Um, well, that scared me. I just kicked my rivet gun over. But anyway, I've got it roughed together except for height and twist. I've got it supported here. I used some really soft wood um, that I had so to bind into those little, those four little brackets under there and it holds it really good. The height in, is level. 
the height is right. I got this panel ready inside and out, primed behind it, and I clamped it here because that's where it wants to open up. A um, lot of pressure there uh, with, the ca with the cage off. But it's ready to, I've, I've got these every other. I'm working from there back. And now I'm going to work this group here that I'm going to switch to the other side. So it's coming really good. I'm really happy so far. And if I run into anything that's odd and really weird, I'll let you know. Um, these gussets are hard to get at. I got a video on that making a really short um, rivet gun to fit in there. If you want to look back through there. And yeah, that's where we're at. It's going good. Really happy. I got these ready and um, now I can go ahead, since I used this trick to pull them in, I made sure I, I did a backside and put a bolt, slid a bolt, the front bolt just slid in with my finger, um, which was under tension. It wouldn't, there's no way. It was quite a ways to go yet. Okay, this might seem just a little bit obvious to you guys, but it didn't to me. And since it didn't, maybe somebody else is making the same mistake. But where it tells you here to locate that 10 millimeters from each ends in the picture here, um, this is definitely an end. And this weld mark would be considered to me in my head an end. So I was thinking, well, out 10 millimeters. Well, it's not, it's to the end of this. And if you remember, we ground that on an angle to match the edge of the inside. So I drew a line down that edge which then it's 10 millimeters in from this end, the end of the epinage, not the end of this bracket. So on the inside, we have a 10 millimeter distance, edge distance from the end of the, ep end, of the end of the epinage. And it looks like this on the inside. Yeah, there I can get a, there that's a pretty good shot of it. But as you can see, um, if you go by the end of the, where that weld is, you're gonna put that bolt right on the edge of that piece of aluminum and you don't want that. So I've clearly got that done and except that I haven't got to do this one here yet. And they're all different lengths. Read real close, you'll get that. And then we get to go play with this part. This was this is actually quite fun when it all comes together. I did find out why that bracket was changed for my airplane. I talked to uh, I talked to Roger and they said they had drilled the hole wrong or something on there. So uh, I built a jig. So I just happened to have, from when I goofed up that wing, that center spar, I had one of the aluminum pieces, the actual piece that fits, the actual piece that fits in there. So I was able to take a piece of wood and uh, get the angles all right and screw that to the wood temporary and then cut this to distance so that I can make a, a bracket that is the wing. So their doubler up here uh, is confirmed that it's in the right spot. We do have a gap back here. Uh, that is probably not your case. That explains that I got um, a new, a different type doubler that I thought they were upgrading to everybody, but it was just to, I believe it was just to so they could use these cages that were drilled wrong. And so my gap is gonna be open there. I'm gonna to have to build something to uh, su not support it, but to uh, keep the air out. Well, we're doing the front ones now. Drill right through, right out to the outside steel and at least get a pilot hole started. The rest of them, the rest of them up top here have to be laid out. But let's get these in first. And don't drill through and get yourself right in the gut. That drill pretty much brand new. That went through quick.
Well, it can't be wrong. Perfect. So these bottom three are the ones that we just drilled. And then we're going to have to set up that rivet line and set those up and drill those. For some reason, they, on 8, 9, and 10, 8 is, eight is a AN 3-4A. And uh, these two are the exact same bolt. For some reason, they break it up from 6 aside to 2 aside. I don't, that confuses me. Why didn't they just bulk them all together? But they even... Hmm. Between 9 and 10... Between 9 and 10, they're just all in a straight line there. And I'm confused because they didn't say put a washer underneath the head of the bolt like they do in here. So nothing really is different. I don't know why, but I guess they, I guess uh, they must have got this drawing made first and were filling in the information here last and had to do that according to the thing instead of just saying number 10 was all the same. Who knows? I'm not quite sure why that's that way. If you know, if you know why it's that way, please comment. All right, now that we get those pile of holes in, I'm going to lay I'm going to lay out the other hole. As you can see, I mocked up this because I seen on the online um, references here that uh, they have a bolt in between. But as I was doing this, it finally occurred to me that there's no bolt in between the two outsides here. This is the fifth edition cruiser, of course. And I just send him, um, I hope Roger doesn't mind me putting this out there, but I just uh, make as short a video as I possibly can and send him a phone message. And he usually gets right back to me. So that's always nice because when we find something, of course we want a quick answer. But that isn't always possible. Roger's a really busy guy. So that was nice. We don't need that bolt in the fifth edition. So in case you've seen that in the books and were confused, there it is. Well, now comes the fun part. After getting it all drilled up, uh, I made sure that back here is all solidly rivered up all the way around. As you can see, all the way to there, except the center, of course, you can't do because I'm not putting those in yet. So I just fully clecoed that. This part, this one's all the way up. All of these are done. And now I feel like, and I did that side. And now I feel like I can go ahead and I touched up all these holes. I even put a little extra paint underneath that where it's going to sit on that bracket. And I can start mounting it. So to me, that's a fun part. I'm going to start out with that little jiggy thing I made. Definitely um, when you've got this much gap pushed out and that needs to be drawn up, this thing does the trick. And the other reason I'm not going to um, film all this is because there's so many instructions in there of what what goes where and uh, there's doublers and there's lots of different bolts with some with washers under the back, some with washers under the head and some without. And uh, since this is going to be permanent, now I've got to really concentrate. Okay, I'll give you a quick overview of what it took to put this on. Um, the thing is, just really uh, watch the plans. Um, they have two different bolts. Like here, you got to really pay attention to the rear channel doubler. It's on the other side, but 14, those, those screw type with the big sleeve, are different than 13 and uh, you'll see it over here describes where the washers go now the uh, do one at a time of course and double check your uh, grip distance the I did have I think there's a little bit of variation depending on where you buy them or where you get them so this these two in here right here these two on the back side called for uh, one washer but I bottomed out on the threads just a little just before I got to where it would torque this up so I took it back apart and put an extra thin washer um, so it's got a regular washer and a thin and I'll try to give you a shot of that 
So there you can see it's this one here and this one back there. That one and that one. There's no really big mystery about of putting what together first. You you can just get the clearance. Um, so once I put that thin washer on there, as you can see, I still got plenty of thread coming outside of the lock nut. So that was a good decision, and that was the and that was the only thing I had to do different. Um, the only thing I haven't done yet is I'm going to put these in a minute. But the A6s went in real nice. Once you upsize. Once you upsize the A6s, they went in really nice. I guess I put that in this way because I could get a rivet gun in there and then realize that this was too steep down inside there to do the others. So, like I said, that's going to be covered, and I'm not worried about that. So that was uh, that took a lot of time. I was really surprised. I guess we'll just call this one done here because I just got to put those little A3s in yet, and I'll move on to the next thing. Uh, I didn't mention that uh, I wouldn't have done this without the cage fitting. Yeah, the uh, the cage is all Clicoed in. This is from here back, completely riveted. From about here back, completely riveted. So that's all right. I just got to go to the other side and start on the left one now. So, hey, thanks for coming along, guys. We'll see you in the next one.